What's up guys, Will here with The Renthusiast, my YouTube channel centering on giving you a driver's eye view of what it's like to own and live with air-cooled Porsches. On this channel, I interview Porsche 911 owners and I also document my journey in owning my two air-cooled Porsches, my 993 and my 86 3.2 coupe. I reveal the good, the bad, and the ugly. So if you are into air cooled Porsches, I urge you to subscribe. That brings me to today's topic 12 tips for first time air cooled Porsche buyers. Uh, over the past several months, I've gotten tons of messages in the comments, on videos, and via Instagram uh, asking me for my advice, insight, thought processes on various purchase decisions that some of you guys out there are trying to make. So, you know, what I thought was, hey, why don't I do a video just sharing tips that I've picked up over time uh, in buying and owning these cars. Uh, before I get into the tips, though, I would like to give you a disclaimer. I am by no means an expert on air-cooled Porsche 911s. Like, I love the cars. I own two of them. Uh, I'm actually looking for two cars now. I'll get into that in a moment. There are plenty of folks out there that have been living and breathing these cars their entire lives. Uh, so if you're one of those people and you disagree with me or agree with me or feel like you can add to this video in terms of tips for guys and gals looking to buy their first air-cooled Porsche, please leave your insight in the comments. You know, feel free to beat up on me. I'm good with that. Okay, tip number one for buying your first air-cooled Porsche 911. Define your goals. This sounds very, very simple. Uh, and straightforward and basic, but I will say this, um, it is very easy to get excited about the idea of buying an air-cooled Porsche and just diving right in. And you couple that with the fact that the market is pretty uh, crazy right now and good solid cars are limited, you might find yourself jumping into something that may not exactly match what it is you're hoping to accomplish long-term with your air-cooled Porsche. I made this mistake uh, when I had a 997 Turbo. I bought the car uh, in a hurry. I got really enamored with it. I didn't think through what the long-term ownership experience was going to be like for me and I ended up really regretting it and I had to sell the car loss. So, you know, for me, um, as I indicated earlier, I am looking for more air-cooled Porsches and what I'm doing is taking a, a more intentional, slower approach to picking these cars up. So, you know, when you think about your goals, you got to ask yourself, hey, am I like a, a Concours person that really enjoys detailing my cars and you know, is, is top-notch condition important to me? Uh, do I want perfect paint? Or, you know, on the other hand, are you somebody who wants to drive the hell out of the uh, car you pick up? You know, are you cool with some patina? So these are the kinds of things you want to ask yourself before you really begin your journey. Because like I said to you, it's really easy just to start to peruse the forums and snatch anything uh, that comes up. Tip number two for buying your first air-cooled Porsche 911, do your research. Um, again, a pretty basic tip, but I will say this, it is well worth your time to spend many hours on forums in air-cooled Porsche Facebook groups, uh, poking around and just monitoring conversations and posts about strong points and weak points of the various air-cooled Porsche 911 generations. It seems like, um, you know, each generation has its issues. I'm not going to get into the specific issues of each generation now. There's plenty of good information out there. In fact, what I'll do is I'll throw a couple links down in the description to some wonderful articles that kind of go through each generation of air-cooled Porsche 911 and outline the good, the bad, the ugly, the kind of things you'll want to look for in terms of preventative maintenance that's been done on any car you're evaluating. Uh, but the bottom line is that it's better to really know what you're dealing with. And you know, don't be frightened if a car does have issues. A good PPI will kind of help you understand what it'll cost you to repair. So uh, what I'm telling you is definitely look into each generation's strong point and weak point once you've defined your goals and what generation of air-cooled Porsche 911 you think you're going to be pursuing. Tip number three, find an air-cooled Porsche mechanic local to you in your town either right before or during your search. Um, here's why. They may not be able to help you during your search, but once you get your first air-cooled Porsche 911, trust me, you are going to need an air-cooled Porsche mechanic. I have um, used two types of mechanics. I really enjoy both. I have one who's local to me, who's kind of your owner-operator, old-school air-cooled mechanic. He lets me go into the garage and watch him work, and he talks to me about what's going on with my car. I also have access to another, what I'll call like a Porsche performance shop. It's a bigger outfit. Again, I'm able to walk through the garage and kind of see what's going on. Having that air-cooled mechanic in your pocket, 
before, during, and after your search is gonna be so critical. Air-cooled is an older technology, as I'm sure you know. The mechanics who are really proficient with air-cooled uh, engines are fewer and further between. I don't know that I would trust um, a Porsche dealership with my air-cooled Porsches. I'm sure that they could do the work, um, but I'm sure it would also be expensive, and I know that you wouldn't have that kind of transparent access that I have with my air-cooled mechanics. So just trust me when I say this. Don't, don't, don't go jump out there, buy your first air-cooled Porsche 911, ship it home, drive it home, or maybe find it locally, and then start looking around for an air-cooled mechanic. It may be that you find yourself in that position. I actually did when I bought my 993. I made this mistake. I bought the 993, had it shipped in, and started to have some issues and had to do some uh, some perusing in my local market. So it would have been a lot better to have somebody in my pocket. Uh, another point I'll make is sometimes air-cooled mechanics have access to cars that are going to be for sale or that are passively uh, for sale, which could help you in your search. So that's tip number three. Tip number four for buying your first air-cooled Porsche 911. And this one is actually pretty good news. And it was, a I don't know about a, as much of a tip as a little bit of encouragement for you, but know that these cars are pretty bulletproof once you get them sorted. I always had, before I got into these cars, this perception that, hey, it's going to be classic, it's gonna be vintage. And I had heard that Porsches, Porsche 911s have their problems. So I always believed that um, the cars were going to be finicky and problematic on an ongoing basis. And, you know, imagine my surprise after I got through the sorting process, which frankly was worse with my 993 than it was with this 3.2. This thing has been freaking bulletproof. But once I got through that sorting process, I have been able to hammer on these cars over and over and over. You know, I'll take them on a road rally and, and just really drive them in a spirited fashion for two solid days. I'll drive up to the mountains, hammer on them, drive home. So just you know, know that there may be some short-term financial pain, number one, in acquiring the car because they're not cheap right now. Really, they're not cheap in general, but right now it's definitely, um, I think that the market's a little bit crazy. Um, and you know, they're not exactly inexpensive to have worked on, although I've been pretty lucky. Just know that um, they're gonna be bulletproof once you get them sorted. Tip number five for buying your first air cooled Porsche 911. Know that you're going to have to be patient in this market. And I'm gonna give you full disclosure right now, man. I am not a patient guy. Like when I'm in the hunt for a car, um, sometimes I'll leap before I look. That's not helpful, especially when buying your first air-cooled Porsche 911. So if you're not well-versed in these cars and you don't really understand the nuances and the, and the differences in the generations and that kind of stuff, it's, it's easy to get hurt uh, financially and otherwise. So, you know, this is one of those things where it may take some time. I would have cash sitting on the sidelines ready to pounce uh, when you have identified what the, which car you want and you know, you've kind of set the stage and found an air-cooled mechanic local to you. Have that pile of cash sitting aside and be ready to spring, but by the same token, you know, keep your eyes out for good listings on PCA or Renlist or Pelican Parts or any number of other channels. Uh, but just know this may take some time. This is not like, hey, I'm gonna run out and find a BMW M3. Uh, those are pretty plentiful, readily available. Um, so just know you're gonna be, need to be patient. I have learned the hard way with other cars that maybe impatience isn't helpful. So just take your time and the right car will find you. Tip number six for first time air-cooled Porsche 911 buyers. Be aware that you are likely going to have to buy your first air-cooled Porsche at a distance. I don't know how experienced you might be with this, but I do know that for me, it can create some anxiety. Uh, the idea of parting with 40, 60, $80,000 sending that to some stranger and waiting for a car to appear on a trailer in front of my house, hoping that it's gonna be what was described to me. So, you know, there is a way of protecting yourself with this, but if, if you're really, if you're starting to look for your first air-cooled Porsche, just know that um, depending on where you live, you may have to have the car shipped and you may be dealing with a seller at a distance. A pre-purchase inspection, which I'll get into in just a few minutes, is going to be absolutely crucial uh, it's a, it's going to be a big part of your process to get some peace of mind around this. I would also say contact your bank, ask them for some advice about how to uh, safely, as safely as possible, uh, do a wire transfer to a seller. And I would also start to shop around for transport services. There are a lot of great car shippers um, around the United States and you, know, you can easily go to one of the forums. Uh, one of the air-cooled Porsche forums and ask the folks there what kind of experience they've had and they might even be able to give you a referral. But the bottom line is, 
If you're really going to do this and you're looking for a car that's going to meet your criteria, be prepared to buy this thing from a distance and do it in a way that can protect yourself. So PPI, contact your bank, and make sure you find a reputable shipper. Tip number seven for buying your first air-cooled Porsche 911, and this is gonna be a little bit odd. You're gonna to need to balance your patience with a sense of urgency. I touched on this earlier, man. Have your financing set up so that you can do a deal very, very quickly. What I'm finding um, out there right now is that anytime a really hot car comes on, it gets sold like that. There was a really cool looking um, 993 in the PCA Classifieds the other day. It was a driver quality white car, had some tasteful mods to it, done to it. It was $55,000. It went up, it, was, it appeared in the morning and by the evening it was gone, it was sold. So, you know, on the one hand, you don't wanna leap before you look as you're perusing and figuring out exactly what kind of air cooled Porsche 911 you want. But by the same token, I don't know that you can really dilly dally and. Um, you know, waste a lot of time when something does come on. A tip that I'll give you around this is, look, you know, you need to, obviously, like I said, have your financing set up, but also have some means of getting peace of mind to, that you can at least secure the car. So think about like a low dollar deposit to get right of first refusal. Reach out, contact the seller, have that conversation very, very quickly, and offer to put a refundable deposit down just to hold the car so you can schedule a PPI. Again, um, when, you, you know, when you see a good car, you're not the only one who's going after it. Trust me when I say that. Um, so you, know, you need to think that through and be prepared to jump, but also to not jump too quickly. Tip number eight for first time air-cooled Porsche 911 buyers. And this one's really, really important. And it's also nuanced. You know, and I'm not, this is not original to me, by the way. Like you're gonna hear this from other folks who are seasoned in the community, but as much as you are buying the car, you are also buying the seller. I will just say that I am still in contact with both of the gentlemen that I bought my air-cooled Porsches from. We text often. It's almost like they pass the cars along to me and that became apparent. Their, their affinity for the cars that I ended up buying became apparent in the first conversations that I had with these sellers. You're gonna see a car you want, you're gonna reach out to the um, to the seller, uh, you're gonna kinda get a feel for, do they seem honest? I mean, that's car buying 101. Do they seem like they're connected to the car? Or are they really eager to get out from under it? How long have they owned the car? Uh, is another question you wanna ask yourself. You know, is this a flip situation, which isn't necessarily always something to run away from, or is this a long-term owner, kinda treasured <clears throat> uh, 911 situation where you, know, you can just tell the car's been well cared for? Um, for me, I know if I buy a car and don't walk away feeling great about the seller, even if I've done my due diligence, there's just something there that just, it doesn't sit right with me. That, that's, that's just me. You may be different than I am, but I wanna feel like I have a connection with the car and the purchase experience, and I wanna feel really, really good about the seller. So definitely make sure that you feel good about the seller, just like you feel good about the car. Okay, tip number nine for first-time air-cooled Porsche 911 buyers. And if you don't know this one, you may wanna fall back and do some basic research on like vintage car buying, but get a pre-purchase inspection before you buy an air-cooled Porsche 911. Uh, it is just too easy to get excited about a car, to get excited about the seller, to kind of build this vision in your mind of what the car is gonna be and just kind of look the other way and trust too much. Um, a PPI is not necessarily gonna be a go, no go decision, right? A pre-purchase inspection can reveal to you uh, a lot about the car. I mean, you know, there are certain non-starters for me like rust, I just can't get past that. Uh, compression and leak down test to understand engine health, that's a very important one because rebuilds can get expensive. So, you know, there are a lot of nuances that go into a pre-purchase inspection that can inform you on, hey, I'm gonna buy this car and it's gonna cost me another $2,000 after I take delivery of it and I'm okay with that. Or, hey, it's gonna cost me another two grand and I'm gonna ask the seller to uh, subtract that from the selling price. So just get that pre-purchase inspection scheduled. In my experience, what I've done before is once I kind of get down the path of identifying a car and having an initial conversation with the seller and having a deal in principle in place, I will ask uh, for a couple of recommendations of air-cooled shops 
uh, in, in the local area to the seller and uh, then I'll reach out to them and I'll, I want to know a couple things. I want to understand A, how much the pre-purchase inspection is, but B, what am I getting for that? Am I going to get a written report or am I going to get some old school guy that gets on the phone with me and just says, hey, this looks great. Uh, I prefer to get as much information as possible. A lot of shops will give you like a robust kind of checklist. Um, they'll shoot video uh, of the underside of the car and make points of what, what they're seeing. Uh, some take pictures. Um, the compression and leak down test I touched on earlier, that's going to give you a sense for the engine health. It's going to be probably, in my experience I've found, um, the compression and leak down test is not included in their you know, kind of standard issue PPI. It's worth paying up for. Uh, I think because a rebuild can be like ten or twenty thousand dollars. That's a nasty mistake. So that PPI is going to reveal that information to you. Another kind of uh, tip that I'd give you is find out if the shop has worked on that specific car before. I have mixed emotions on that. On the one hand, you know it's good that they would know the car because you feel like, hey, um, the car has been taken care of, the owner has put money into it and had it repaired or maintained at this shop. But on the other hand, you kind of got to say, hey, does my seller have an inside relationship with this shop who will, you know, kind of look the other way on certain issues and tell me, the buyer, who they don't know from Adam, that, oh, the car's great, when in fact, maybe there's a couple of issues. So you got to ask yourself, like, what is your risk tolerance for this? Bottom line is this. Do your research on what pre-purchase inspections uh, should look like for each generation of air-cooled Porsche 911 and get it done. Tip number 10 for first-time air-cooled Porsche 911 buyers, and I've found this to be true as unpleasant as it is. Set aside five to 10% of the total purchase price of your first air-cooled Porsche for preventative maintenance and repairs and deferred maintenance items. Um, you know, I've talked to you a little bit about what I've done, like the pre-purchase inspection, buying the seller, feeling good about the car. Maybe you fly out and take a look at the car and drive it home. Maybe the car is local to you. But in my experience, the car is going to need something. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't really remember what I had to do with this car. I think initially I might have had to do uh, plugs or there was just a couple things that had to be done uh, to it. Once I did it, it's been sorted. My 993 was a different story. Uh, I kept running into gremlins. I've done some videos about this, by the way, so definitely you can look through the channel and, and see. But you know, I've had to deal with sensors. I had to take the engine out and have a have a reseal done. It, it felt like it was one thing after another for a period of time. And I will tell you, I think I spent more than 10% of my purchase price on all the repairs. But the bottom line is, five to 10% of the total purchase price set aside for maintenance and repairs. And oh, by the way. You're gonna pick the car up and you're gonna to start to say, hey, listen, it's got the stock steering wheel. I think maybe I wanna put a prototypo in here. Or, uh, man, I like the 915 gearbox, but it could be even better with a Wevo Classic shifter. Uh, or maybe, hey, like I wanna put some new suspension on the car and on and on and on it goes. So the bottom line is, don't sit there and think that it's just gonna stop once you buy the car. Set aside some more cash, you'll be good. Tip number 11 for first-time air-cooled Porsche 911 buyers, uh, and this is just the case for me, and maybe I'd like to hear in the comments if this one ties, or if this one relates to you as well. Once you have, you know, bought your first air-cooled Porsche 911, spent the money to get it sorted and modded, start saving your money for your second one. Because I know for me, like I couldn't stop with one. Uh, I own two, as I've shared with you. I've got the 86 and the 993. I'm currently looking for uh, like a 73911T long hood. I'm also kind of poking around for a 964, perhaps in a killer color. By the way, if you know of either of those two cars for sale, hit me up, would love to hear from you. Uh, but the bottom line is these cars grow on you, they get in your soul and you're gonna want more than one. So I hope you find yourself in the position to be able to do that. Tip number 12 for first time air cooled Porsche buyers. Don't be afraid to ask for help in the community. I've shared this in previous videos. I have found the air cooled Porsche 911 community to be for the most part, very positive, supportive, happy to help, happy to network, happy to text with you about the cars and any questions you have. Um, there are a lot of great online avenues for information, right? Like there's uh, the, the air cooled Porsche 911 
group on Facebook, tens of thousands of members there. Uh, there's Renlist with a lot of really great forums on air cool Porsches. So definitely do your searching before you start to ask basic questions like, hey, what kind of oil does this car take? But you know, the last tip I'd give you is definitely don't be afraid to network and ask guys and gals for advice. So there you have it. This has you know, been my experience. Again, I don't claim to be an expert uh, in these cars. I think I have some level of credibility because I have lived with them, I have spent money on them, I have been around other owners. You know, I read about them obsessively, I monitor classifieds and other uh, auction avenues all the time because you know, they really have gotten in my soul. So look, I hope you've gotten something out of this. Uh, feel free to check out my website, renthusiast.com. I'm always putting articles up on that site about buying and owning air-cooled Porsches. And I do hope you decide to subscribe to the channel. Would love to have you on board. Really appreciate you checking out the video today and I hope to see you next time.